Banana is one of the most common grown crops in Tanzania. The crop is widely cultivated in the Kagera region since banana is the staple food for the residents of that region. Despite of the crop being key to the livelihood of the residents of Kagera regions and other regions such as Kilimanjaro, some other banana species are consumed as a rib banana in urban areas. In recent years, we have heard the cry of hunger for Kagera residents for the first time after their banana farm have been attacked by the dangerous disease of banana wilt in which inhabitants of the region call Mnyanjano and the other call banana aids because the disease has no cure as it is with human aids. And given the fact that the first aid patent in Tanzania was discovered from that region. Our journey to find out about the cry begins with Mr. Innocent Detabura, the principal of the Maruku Agriculture Research Institute in Kagera region that is responsible for the conducting research and resolving banana related challenges in the country and increasing productivity. Here he explains about this disease. Banana wilt is a bacterial disease that spread widely in Kagera region since 2006. It first started in Muleba district and subsequently it spread in all the districts in the region. We continue to research on the best methods that could reduce the effects of this disease. We also researched on its causes, spreading and able to provide education to all regional stakeholders, including practitioners and banana farmers. As you know, this is a region where banana is the main food and business crop. This disease is, can be spread by the farmers themselves through the materials they use on their farms as holes, swords, etc. It can also spread by wasps when they move for flowers from one banana plant to the next. Even if animals, especially monkeys, when they eat from infected banana and move to the next causes the spread of this disease. The effect is great because banana farms for majority of farmers were affected. Since banana farms were affected, there were food shortages in the household. So we are currently advising farmers to start depending on other food such as cassava, sweet potatoes, maize instead of depending on banana only and since banana is chair of traditional farmers moving to other crops be becomes as if you have to force them although in reality they have to go to other products generally many banana dependent families have been affected both economically and on food security According to the researcher, the disease has brought negative impact to the region's resident. These residents, whose banana is their staple food, complain of hunger when there are shortage of banana, even if there are other crops such as maize, cassava and potatoes. As I speak to you, I have about seven children in the family. But feeding them is a challenge because of sh food shortages. Some children were unable to go to school. Though they were selected to go, but I could not afford the expenses of taking them to school and getting them to eat because of the banana wilts. We are really very worried about this problem in the village, as it has become a major problem. The situation is bad. That is, I even failed to get food and we only eat ugali. Banana wilt has not as a lot. We used to eat nchakala, nchoncho, nyoa, different banana species for cooking. But after the disease which caused shortage of banana, people are now eating even fear. Traditionally not suitable for cooking, mainly used to make brew, which is not tradition. We depend on banana mostly because the farming has been helping us to send children to school. Currently the situation is very bad because of the disease. For example, we were relying on banana farming for our economic growth. 
but you'll be surprised someone with five acres at the moment ends up with maybe only five batches of banana and he takes only one meal per day. The situation is terrible mainly in villages. Formerly, bananas were bought here because my banana farm was very fruitful. And now I see it has begun to come. Maybe God can bless me again. People used to ask if I were using a fertilizer. And I told them I did not, but it was God's blessing. Bananas were really sold here. But when the disease appeared, everything changed, and you can destroy five to six affected plants a day. Mm -hmm. An extinction of banana is some thing we never heard of. The banana we eat now have been then from generation to generation. We did not plant them. Our forefathers did, and we continued with them to date. However, if you try to plant banana, eat unlike previous before the banana wilt. The plant doesn't grow well and it wilts a certain stage and I don't think there could be an alternative crop for Kagero residents. The disease has caused huge effect on us. We had never experienced food shortages in Kagera region. But because of banana wilt, we had shortages of banana and people starved. When someone finds you buying maize flour, you look like someone of low status. You know, we are not used to eating cassava and potato meals. Eating them was shameful, but we are currently eating them. Various efforts have been made by researchers in Maruku Research Institute in cooperation with district and regional agriculture specialists in assisting the farmers to reduce the risk of disease in order to facilitate access to food. The current efforts have been to provide accurate knowledge about this disease, its symptoms and prevention measures and teaching farmers how to prevent the spread. Prevention measures include eliminating the terminal portion of the bunch of banana, cleaning the equipment used in the field by making sure the equipment used in one field is not used in other without cleaning it. Also by chopping and peeling up the affected plant and cleaning the equipment used with the pesticides or fire. And with the support of the regional office, through the use regional and district exclude committees, we have reduced the impact of this disease to nearly 90%. But because some farmers do not care and they don't abide by the prevention measure during harvest, they use the same tools in different farms and some banana traders move from one field to another using the same equipment. In so doing, the disease keeps on spreading. Of course, efforts are being made in regional and districts, offices, and researchers by continuing to educate farmers, and we have established by laws to farmers in order to combat the disease. We are still doing research, and we are yet to get seeds that are tolerant, and researchers are still continuing to make sure we get good seeds, and there are good signs that next year we can take samples to farmers to try them and see which seeds will be able to tolerate this disease. The cry was heard in Tanzania and other neighboring countries such as Uganda, where banana is also a main crop. Also, informally, reports indicate that the disease penetrated into Tanzania from Uganda, where the government and its researchers have made various efforts to deal with the disease through genetic engineering technology. The gene technology used is by applying the gene from paper that prevent the insect from attacking banana plants. In the initial stages addressing the famine in Kagera region, Various efforts have been taken by the government along with other agriculture stakeholders including the National Commission for Science and Technologies COSTEC by training agriculture officers in all districts in the region. 
the training enable them to diagnose the disease and provide them with the various ways of dealing with the disease and later train and provide farmers with fresh seeds produced through tissue culture. One of the cost responsibilities is to ensure that research findings reach targeted individuals. Banana is their staple food and there has been a problem with the disease and many of their areas were affected by the disease. So one way to help these farmers is to bring better seeds that are disease free so that they can get good harvest. This will ensure they keep food and they can do business from seeds that are pure and productive. And so we expect at the end of the day, many farms will have benefited from the seeds and the farmers themselves will be ambassadors of this technology that is good and effective. We funded this project because we want to encourage this new technology to farmers who include this group. I urge you all to give these seedlings due attention that they should not die. If you face any problems, our researchers are there to help. Just communicate it through the district leadership. We will support so that we can make a nationwide example for this technology in banana crop. The seeds were received by farmers in groups and planted into demo farms so that they could be protected and many other fresh seeds obtained from those fields that will be used to distribute to other farmers. Recognizing the importance of that crop and the main problem of food for the resident, make it Kagera Region Commissioner for the first to launch the Costec project and emphasize the importance of science and technology in addressing farmers' challenges and increasing productivity. <laughs> This is now what it means to modern agriculture. So I thank Costec by bringing us the seeds that we could try them here. And I'd like to, the seeds to be split into different words and have demo farms. People should learn by seeing and get rid of unproductive traditional farming. I will personally be visiting those fields and see how they are doing and how they are managed. Agro officers, you should be very alert to monitor these demo farms at each stage so as to bring about the desired expectations. It is now four months since the new banana seeds were planted in demo farms and the difference is seen. Farmers point out what they now see on their farms and their hope to continue eat banana as usual. In quality, these are better than ours. First, it is because when they are brought, these banana seedlings, the seedlings were as small as nails and the time of planting we were even worried that this would be impossible and would not grow. Surprisingly, as we see today, the plants are better than ours. Now the question of banana wilt, we do not know where, whether these bacteria come from. I do not know whether they come from our banana plants or else. But now we will be compelling whether the disease begins, will it begin in our farms or in this demo farm. I've liked more these bananas than our traditional ones, and if God wishes that they will not be affected by the disease, we hope to get this kind of disease seed so as we can plant it since it is tolerant to disease. I should use this opportunity to congratulate and thank this organization because it is my first time to see this kind of seed. The banana in the demo farm will help us to overcome the problem in our traditional banana farms. 
Looking at the seedlings that we have planted, it is obvious they have no disease and they are drought tolerant. When people pass here, always get surprised, and the others wanted me to sell them the seeds, but I told them this is a district farm. I advised them to wait maybe until then when it will be approved to start selling the seeds. I've tried to plant banana and even apply the fertilizers to, an, to no avail. Initial, when you plant it, grows well until when it reaches the stage of bearing fruits that is attacked seriously. The difference is very great. This is very good, as is a big failure. Farmers' hope has been restored. What is the view of the regional agriculture officers and the banana researcher after this seed shown positive results? We hope we hope produce enough seeds so when the demo farms are ready, we hope for is the fact that the groups as part of their contribution, the community will distribute seeds. Of course, they will be selling at low cost to repair the cost is they incurred during production. So they will collaborate with the communities in distributing the seeds to people since these farms seem to have good seeds. Our current strategy is to continue working with other stakeholders. The stockholders in our region should look on how they can help to support us where Costec is handed. There are about 10 groups that benefit from Costec. So if we get more stakeholders to support us, we'll be productive. <laughs> Culture is great because we advise a farmer remove the affected plant and wait for at least two or three months for these insects to die. But after the long wait, this farmer misses a good source of seeds that do not have diseases. So at the end of the day, he returns to the same affected fields to fetch for seeds. Thus, tissue culture has a great chance. We get help from the Tishka Chekula Laboratory in Arusha, and we have also been assisted with that in Daresam. However, it's very little. We also have something we call macro propagator in Maruku, but its production is limited to achieving the amount required to cover the demand. Farmers also have their own source, and we find it difficult to prevent insects from getting in, and it becomes difficult to find clean fields. If we get tissue culture, we can produce for Kagera region because the demand is very high. For instance, last year more than 3 million seedlings were needed that the supply was very small. There were seeds. They were out to find tissue culture which will specialize in producing banana seedlings. And other crops such as cassava and potatoes, especially for Kagera region, with the ability to generate very large quantities of for short time. Currently, when the seeds are needed, we have to conduct the Arusha Tissue Culture Laboratory and order for the seeds. The order that takes three months and no farmer is ready to wait for such a long period, so the farmer will fall wherever he sees sweeter for him. I think that the tissue culture that can produce large quantities for a short time will be very helpful to farmers. It is a fact that the disease has now begun to decline although it cannot be eliminated completely since the technique used are short term and the banana plant can also be attacked by banana wilt if farmers are to plant in the uncleaned fields. Efforts are needed to ensure the approach used by our Ugandan neighbors in response to the disease is also looked at and used by our researchers in a country to reduce banana plant that cannot be attacked by dangerous disease and to cause our farmers to starve and become poor. I wanted to know from the principal researcher of the Maruku Agriculture Research Institute, which is responsible for the banana research, the role of genetic engineering in dealing with the disease as it is done by our Ugandan neighbors. This is a challenge. We have the government. This because the disease is very difficult to combat if we can, if we are not careful. And when you tell the farmer to be careful by removing, removing the affected plant and using the safe seeds, but there are no seedlings. 
That's the challenge we have. And since we are close to Uganda, most of the farmers follow the technology from their neighbors, which they come and use. The GMO, GMO technology is something that we cannot go fast to use because it is not common to this end. However, there are debates about it. I think it's not yet time. When the time reaches, we will move it to it. We must start with researches. We must concentrate on reliable researches and establish whether this technology, that this is something safe, and even when you go to people, we are sure of it. It is only technology that will end this banana wheat problem. Tanzania is not an island unless we give our researchers the material and the readiness of the country to research. Kagera farmer who are neighbors to Uganda will get the technology from their neighbors and bring it to Tanzania as it was said the researcher. It is not an easy to prevent the hunger person from getting food where he sees the possibility.